Hello, welcome or welcome back to Let's Pro's Aptitude Management Studies. Um, I hope you've all understood what we've done in the previous modules and have been practicing so that this particular arithmetic operation also becomes easier. So it's very important for you to have a little bit of understanding from the numbers that we did in the previous modules, right? So today's module is talking about arithmetic for aptitude test. Now what is arithmetic? Arithmetic is all about numbers, right? So the same thing is applicable to us as well, right? So in the operation, so what kind of operations can be done on numbers? That is what arithmetic means, right? Let's quickly get into the overview of arithmetic. What are the topics that are we, that we are covering here? We are doing percentages, we are doing profit and loss, we are doing simple and compound interest, we are doing ratio, proportion and partnership and we are also doing average and mixtures. Now remember for your aptitude examinations in the exams like uh, your co-cubes, right, TCS, NQT and exams like that, they do not really expect you to know everything, right, they just want you to know the basics. So that's why we have kept this module the same way, we have made sure that the basics are covered really well so that you are able to answer questions from the basics, right. And remember, we have also picked out questions only from the uh, past papers, therefore it becomes easier for you to assess as to where you stand. Right? Okay. What is the importance of this? This is common in, across all uh, aptitude tests. This will test the speed, clarity of concepts and calculation efficiency. Now, like I said, this is very important for to build your basics. Hence, this is common across all major tests. Right? Now, quickly get into uh, percentages. Now, what is percent? Percent means, now this word per, you know what is per, right? And cent means 100. So, when we talk about percent, we are trying to say that it means per 100. So, everything is being calculated per 100, right? What are the common forms here? Percentage change is new minus old divided by old into 100. So, that's the new percentage, right? And successive percentage changes will tell you as to what is the difference between the percentages old one and new one, right? Uh, finding a number from percentage is also there. What are the applications here? For exam purposes, to understand the discounts, to understand population, voting and all of that, right? Now, what is the tip? You will always convert percentage to fractions for faster calculation. Example, 25%. So, since we are talking about per 100, so we are dividing it by 100. 25 by 100 is nothing but 1 by 4. So, that's what we will be doing across, right? Let's quickly get into the first problem. Uh, what is 20% of 250? Let me pick a pen for you. Okay. Now, when we say tw uh, we are converting percentage to a number, always divide by 100 because it is percent, right? So, 20% divided by 100% into what are we doing? We are taking for 250. Therefore, you multiply by 250. What are you going to get now? This 0, this 0 gone, this and this gone. So, nothing but 2 into 50. Uh, sorry, 25 into 2 is nothing but 50. Therefore, what is 20% of 250? The number 50. It is not percentage. Remember that, right? All right. The next problem, problem number 2. A number is increased by 20% and then decreased, right? So, I can say 20% and 20% gets cancelled. Find the net change. What is the net change? Nothing but since we are decreasing it, so 20% into 20% divided by what is the total? We know it is 100, right? So this is nothing but minus 0, 0, 0, 0 gone, so forth. So nothing but 4% net change, all right? We cancelled this 20 and 20 because the numbers were same. Otherwise, we would have written this as, you know, 20 minus 20 minus of this entire scenario. All right. Okay. Let's get in the next problem quickly. 30% uh, of a number is 120. Find the number. This is an interesting question. Not. Uh, it's a very simple question again. So, all you need to know is we know 30%. 30 whenever we are saying percent, we always divide it by 100. Of a number, let's call it as x, 
is equal to how much? 120. So all you have to do is you should know how to make this equation, right? So what will you do now? This and this 0 can be cancelled out. So x can be written as 120 into 10 divided by 3. So 3 ones are 340 s are. So I can say x is nothing but 400. The final answer for x which means 30% of 400 is 120. You can check this later and verify if our answer is right or wrong. Now we come to something called as profit and loss. Now in your daily life you generally come across this uh, word or phrase known as profit and losses. What is this profit and loss? Under this we have something called as the CP. CP is noth nothing but the cost price. The Let's say uh, we I have a duster here, right? So I have this duster. This costs around 100 rupees, right? The idea behind this is from the manufacturer this was gotten for 100 rupees but there is a store which sells the same thing for let's say 200 rupees right so you see the difference 100 and 200 so the initial price is known as the 100 100 rupees which is the cost price the one that it is being sold for is known as the selling price which is sp right then we have something called as the marketed price now marketed price is somewhere in between cost price and selling price okay all right now profit is nothing but now if i have to find the profit if someone has sold me uh, sorry uh, sold me something for the duster for that matter if someone has sold it to me for 100 rupees and i am selling it for 200 rupees you see how are you making you know there is a 100 rupees profit now how do you know that it's nothing but selling price minus the cost price that is what we've written here Co profit is equal to sp minus cp what is loss Loss, whenever you're some, uh, so second hand goods, right, they all go for loss generally. So what do we do? Cost price minus the selling price, right? What is the profit percentage? Profit by CP into 100. What is discount? It is the marketed price minus the selling price. They've given a tip, use ratio method when percentage is high or successive discounts. This is generally not found in uh, aptitude questions that you generally have, but make a note of this, right? Always use ratios. All right, let's quickly get into the problem. Um, first question is given to you. It says CP is 500 rupees, SP is 600. What is the profit percentage? So to find the profit percentage, we know, I will just write it as P percentage, we need P by CP into 100. Now how do I find out profit? I know it's L, SP minus CP, so that would be 100 divided, what is my CP? It is 500 into 100, so this is gone, 5 ones are, 5 twenties are, so 20% 20 is the profit, okay? Alright, coming to the next problem. A shopkeeper offers 10% discount on uh, 1000 rupees. So if 10,000, so your uh, ideal price, the pri this price, what is this price? Try and find out what is the price, right? So that is nothing but our selling price, right? Now selling price, under selling price, we have 10% discount, right? So for 10% discount, it means for 100, if 1% is 1, then for 1000, 10% uh, would be again 1, which is 100, right? So SP is 1000 minus 100 which is nothing but 900 right so that is our selling price his cost is 850 rupees which means the cp is nothing but 850 rupees find profit percentage first find out the profit profit is nothing but 50 900 minus 850 what is profit percentage now 50 divided by what is the cp 850 into 100 right so this this gone and uh, i can say 50, uh, 5, 10 are, right? And this would be 5, uh, 1 are, and I can take 3, which is 7, right? So profit percentage is nothing but 100 by 17. Now, if you see 17, 10s are uh, 170, so roughly about 4 or 5 percent, right? So that is the profit percentage. All right.
let's get on to the next uh, topic which is simple and compound interest so what are we looking at here what is simple interest what is compound interest in simple interest we have p t r by 100 where p is the principal amount r is the rate of interest t is the time divided by 100 now why are we dividing it by 100 because in total the percentage is always carried for 100 right now for ci we have p times 1 plus r by 100 power t minus p. Now what is this uh, SI and what is CI? What is the difference between these two? Now simple interest is there is a uh, principal amount and you uh, yearly basis you keep getting some interest on it. That is your simple interest. What is compound interest? This happens exponentially. Now for two years it was this. For fourth year it might be much more the rate of interest might, might be higher or the time that we're looking at can be higher we can get the rate of interest for three months for six months eight months things like that so it keeps on increasing and decreasing uh, exponentially right now doubling time in ci use rule of 72 time is equal to 72 by rate this is a general scenario that you will be looking at now what is a tip use formula smartly ci for two years is si plus simple interest on this tip is very important as this has been continuously asked in your exams, right? Okay, let's get into the first problem. Find SI on 2000 at 5% for 3 years, right? So our principal amount is given as 2000 rupees, our rate is given as 5% and the time is given as 3 years. Always remember the time that we calculate is always for 3 years, right? So, for from here, our SI is nothing but PTR by 100. So, I will be, I have only been writing this for just once. Otherwise, you don't have to write all of this. So, 2000 into 5 into 3 divided by 100. So, this is gone. You ideally have uh, 3 twos are 6, 6 was around 300 rupees is your simple interest right okay now they are asking you the compound interest for 1000 rupees for two years at 10 percent rate so year one now this you remember the tip that i told you for the second year it's simply the so, simple interest plus the principal amount. So, year 1, it says, so out of 1000, 10% meaning, so 100 rupees is my interest, right? So, year 2 would be nothing but your 100 plus how much? 10% 10 of 100, which is 10. So, nothing but 110 rupees. So, that's your uh, compound interest. So, what is the total interest? 100 plus 110. So, which is nothing but 210 rupees is the total interest after 2 years, okay. Ratio proportion and partnership, okay. Now what is this ratio? Ratio means A is to B which means there is a relationship between A and B out of which we are bringing A divided by B, okay. What is proportion? There are 4 variables now. Now A into B, sorry. A into B would be equal to B into C. That is your proportion, right? What is a partnership? If A and B initiate uh, invest for different time periods, A's share would be directly proportional to share amount into the time. That is the partnership that we talk about, right? So here use cross multiplication in proportion problem. Like I said, A into D is equal to B into C. That's how you will find your proportions, okay? Let's get into the first problem. Divide 120 rupees in uh, ratio 2 is to 3. So the total is nothing but 5 now from here, right? So from here we know the total is 5. So how do we find out each one of them, right? So it is nothing but 2 into 5 into, sorry, 2 divided by 5 into 120. Now do this, do the math. So here you have 2s are 2 and then 4. 24 into 4, 24 into 2 is 48. So that is one part. Next is 3. So 3 divided by the total is 5 into 120. Again, 5 ones are 5 24s are. What is 24 into 3? You can do the math. We will find it to be 72. So the final answers are 48 and 72. If you add these up, you will know that the total is equal to 120 rupees. Sorry, yeah, 120 rupees. Then the ratio is 2 is to 3. This can be 3 is to 4 also, but provided you are you're dividing it by 7. Okay. 
Now we have the next one. A invests 5000 for 12 months. B invests 6000 for 6 months. What is the share? Very simple. So 5000 if it's invested for 12 months, we are multiplying by 12, right? Again, 6000 is being invested for 6 months. Now, what is the share? Always in, in ratios. So, what is this equal to? You can um, just take this as 500 into 12 is to 6000 into 6. So, if you simplify this further, right? So, since it is, it comes in division, you can multiply. So, three zeros and three zeros gone. Six ones are, six twos are, five twos are ten. So, ten divided by six. This is nothing but five is to three, right? So, this is the share for both of them. All right. Now, the next concept which is averages uh, and mixtures. What is the synopsis for this? Average is nothing but to sum of the total divided by each individual number. Sorry, the, the number of uh, terms that is present divided by each of sum, right? Weighted average is nothing but uh, the number into whatever the point is existing plus the second number into the point and so on divided by the numbers itself, right? There is something known as the allegation rule. Here, when two items, uh, when two items mixed, use higher minus mean is to mean minus lower. This is something that is there in uh, very high competitive examinations. Here we do not have and we do not have questions that have been asked. That's why we have not brought in. But there was a point where they mentioned allegation rule. That's why we are teaching you what allegation rule means, right? What is the tip? Use deviation method for faster averages. Deviations are nothing but from the graph you understand what is the deviation between the numbers, all right? Okay. First question, average of five numbers is 20. Find the total. Very simple. Uh, average is nothing but what? Each numbers divided by your n, the total number that is present, right? So, we don't know this. So, what I will do right now is, I will take average is equal to x divided by, they are telling us 5, right? So, 20 into 5 is equal to x, alright? So, 20 into 5 is nothing but 100. They have not asked us to find what are each individual number. They are just asking us to find this sum, alright? Okay. Next. Mix milk at 50 per liter and water at 30 per liter to get 40 per liter. What is the ratio? Very simple, right? So, the ratio is what are you doing? You are doing 50 for to get 40 liters. So, 50 minus 40 and what are you doing? 40 minus what is this? 30, right? So, this is nothing but 10 divided by 10. So, what is the ratio? Very simple, 1 is to 1, all right? Okay. Now, let's quickly, we have already come to the end of this particular module. Let's quickly summarize this. What is percentage? Uh, so, it is percent, which is per 100, part by whole into 100. Profit percent is profit by CP into 100, where discount is nothing but our marked price minus selling price. Uh, SI is nothing but PRT by 100, which is the simple interest. CI is the compound interest. Here, P is 1 plus R times uh, R by 100 power T minus P. Then we have the ratio A by B or A is to B. Average is nothing but the sum by the count. Then we have allegation rule. Here we are going to cross uh, use cross subtraction for ratios that we just did in this particular problem. right? In this particular problem, what did we do? 50 minus 40, 30, uh, 40 minus 30. So, there was cross subtraction rule. That is nothing but our allegation rule. This was not asked. We have brought this for you so that you understand what allegation is. right? Make sure you practice this as much as possible. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult for you to follow up uh, in the long run. All right. Happy learning. Please do comment uh, and ask if you have any doubts and I am sure we will be able to answer to you all the very best.